Hi guys, Coach V here. Welcome to another episode of Transformative Talk with Coach V. I am excited about this week's topic. I hope that you are ready to take some notes. Uh, I hope that you are well. I hope that um, the episodes that we have had so far have been helpful. This has really been I believe a season where God is just really speaking and giving some specific instruction and even more so than that correction. It's time, I believe the Lord is saying for us to course correct and start to really show up and do things in a different way so that we can really be in alignment with his purpose and his plan and his will for our lives. And so it's requiring us Uh, We talked about it last week that there's more that is required. Um, And so we have to do some things differently um, in this particular uh, dispensation of time. And that's going to require us to show up differently. And that's exactly what we're talking about on today. How are you showing up? You know, I think a lot of times we tend to feel like because our presence is, it, you know, because we were we're present or we grace people with our presence or we feel like because we physically showed up, that is enough. And what we have to remind ourselves, just as we talked about it on last week, there is so much more that's required of us. It's more than just showing up. Um, You know, I say all the time, even on this podcast, keep showing up and keep doing your work. That means that there's always going to be something that's required of us, whether we're in a season of hard, whether we're experiencing hardship, whether we're in our season of harvest. You know, even if we're in a season of, you know, abundance or overflow, there is still a certain way that we have to show up. We have to steward it well. We have to be responsible. We still have to serve. We still have to give. So those are things that we have to be very, very mindful of. And if we're not careful, the way that we show up can negatively infect people It could negatively affect people. It could be a great gross misrepresentation of what um, walking with God, serving God, calling ourselves a child of God. It could it could really mess up how people view us, how people view him. It helps, you know, or could completely damage, do damage to their decision that they make in serving him in surrendering their life to him. So we have to be very, very careful on how we show up in every situation and in everything we do. So we're going to talk about that on today. How are you showing up? So when we think about showing up, any of us that have lived any period of time there are some things that we probably have experienced it's just maybe how we even feel really at this point so the first thing um, you know we always talk about you know how do we get here how do we get to a point to where we're really having to look at how we're showing up because we may think that the way we're showing up is enough we may think that it's satisfactory. We may think that it's just what it's supposed to be. We think that just showing up, like I said, just physically being there is all that's required. And it's supposed to just soothe and calm everything. And really, in truth, we're probably doing the bare minimum if we're honest with ourselves. So how do we get to a place that we really have lost direction and clarity on what it is to show up. The first thing, we're tired. I don't, you know, how many of us, we just say, Lord, I am tired. We, you know, probably say it several times in a week, especially when we're being challenged, especially when we're going through something really difficult. We've been through enough. We, we've, 
suffered. We've been tested and tried. It's been hard. It's been difficult. It's been all these things. And we're just tired mentally, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually. We're tired. We feel tapped out. We feel like we have given more than we can stand to give. We've given more than we really, you know, had to give. And so we just resign ourselves to just really being flat out tired. We don't know the true meaning of resting, taking time for ourselves. We love to talk about self-care and those kind of things, but we've got to realize, ladies, you know, self-care is more than going to get your nails and your feet done. Yeah, you can you can relax if you know how to truly relax and just take that time to rest. But usually we're trying to figure out how long is this going to take because we have several other things to do. So we don't really use it as an opportunity to take that hour, hour and a half and just allow ourselves to just let our minds go blank and and just really enjoy the process. So we're just tired. We're we're functioning on fumes. You know, we're just doing everything out of the perfunctory. It's just habit. So we're not really fully dialed in and present mentally and emotionally when it comes to certain things. Even when we're at church, we just do what we do out of religion, not out of relationship. So we just really, you know, for all intents and purposes, we're a little bit tapped out. Our tank is on E, if we're if we're honest. The second thing that the Holy Spirit um, shared with me is that we don't even know what showing up looks like. This was a huge one because what it's it's either going to be one or two scenarios, one of two scenarios. It's either that we never we're taught what it looks like to show up, what it looks like to serve, what it looks like to steward, what it looks like to show yourself trustworthy, what it looks like to show yourself faithful. So that's never really been properly demonstrated for us to where it does not deplete us in a negative sense. You know, if anything, religion has taught us how to serve and be present and do this, that, and the third. And what happens is that we end up being absolutely teetotally exhausted because we're doing it out of, again, the perfunctory, showing up to usher when nobody else will show up, showing up to be a greeter when nobody else, it's yours, it's it's not even your Sunday and you've done the past two Sundays and now at the last minute you ask to do it again. We do it to be faithful to an institution, to an idea. And so therefore, God doesn't get the glory out of it because you're tired. You know, your mindset, your your you try to tell yourself, well, it's for the church and it's for God. But if you got a little bit of uh, in your heart, if you got a little bit of resentment, you're a little bit angry. That bitter root is is getting in the way of God doing something amazing and miraculous. Amen. And so a lot of times it's either that, you know, we're shown how to do it to show up out of religion or obligation, or it just was never demonstrated for us in any form or fashion. We didn't see what that looked like as far as parents, as far as uh, adults, our elders, it just was not something that was demonstrated in a way that gave us a positive image or idea or blueprint on what it is to really show up in your life. So it's either a really, really hard, hard model with these incredibly high standards that are very judgmental and critical, or there's just absolutely nothing at all. And so it, you kind of fall in to one of those two categories and that becomes very, very difficult. And so when you're not shown how to really show up, it really does make it difficult to now take that on in your life and show up for the people that are important to you, 
your spouse, your your family, your children, you know, and then you that's the example. So you only give what you were given. And so we have to realize oftentimes to, to know better is to do better. Right. And here's the third thing that Holy Spirit shared with me. We feel like we're being judged or we um, like we are just always either being judged or just always in the spotlight. Like everything, you know, nothing is ever right. Nothing is ever to the standard that it needs to be. Again, you know, when you go even to religion, um, we, we focus more on the way a person is dressed as opposed to their soul. We look at the outside more than we do the heart. The Bible even tells us man looks at the outside, but, but God looks at the heart. And so, you know, we, we focus on things that are really not important. So oftentimes in this showing up, all eyes are on us. Everything is being critiqued. Everything is being judged. Every word we say, how we walk, how we wear our hair. Like it just gets to be this overwhelming sense that we go back to being tired and then we don't really know how to show up because according to what is being said to us in a very judgmental harsh way is really not what it is and how it should be so then we that therefore makes another difficult hard place for us and so we always feel as if we're being judged and criticized. We always feel like everything that we do, everything that we say, every move that we make is under the microscope. And it, that very well may be for those that don't have anything else better to do. So that's where you have to make the decision. Are you going to focus more on them or him? So this is where we make that decision. After we've reviewed these things, now we get to make a decision because we're going to turn and we're going to shift. We're going to shift our focus from, you know, what the naysayers say or the, you know, the opinions of other people. We're we're not going to shift that and we're going to focus everything on him. That's where our transformative thought for the week comes into play, because this is the thing that we now Um, take as our affirmation is our declaration and we're going to shift the way that we think we're going to change the way that we think and the way that we talk and as we go into the transformative truths in a minute those things are going to help us show up differently so here's our transformative thought for the week I am committed to showing up for myself and for my legacy Here's the thing. At the end of the day, when we make a decision to show up, we're not only showing up for us, but we're showing up for everybody that is connected and attached to us. Our legacy, our children, our God children, our nieces, our nephews, our grandchildren, you know, our our students, whoever it is that watches us, that may be inspired, that we may have sown a positive seed into All of those things matter because it is going to be our legacy and what we have sown into them that will be the fruit that other people will be able to benefit from. So we have to make that commitment today to show up for ourselves and for our legacy. If we don't have children, we have friends, we have family members, we have people that whether they ever say it to us, they watch what we do. They listen to what we say, how we handle situations, all of those things. There's an audience. They may not say so, but let me tell you, they are there and they are watching and they are paying attention. And so we don't do it because we know someone is watching. We don't do it because we're looking for somebody to acknowledge us or to validate us or to approve us. But we're doing it because we know that it is the right thing to do.
We're doing it because we know that is what God has called us to do. When I looked at Mark 13 and 33, the Bible tells us, and since you don't know when that time will come, be on guard, stay alert. I'll even go back to verse 32. Verse 32 says, however, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen, not even the angels in heaven or the son himself. Only the father knows. And since you don't know when that time will be, will come, be on guard. We have to constantly keep ourselves in a place, in a posture, in a um in a position that we don't know when God will show up. We don't know uh, when things are going to shift, but we have to show up every day. My favorite thing to say, I close out every video, every podcast, keep showing up and keep doing your work. We have to keep showing up. It is so important that we keep showing up because The day that we decide, you know what, I'm tired. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm too frustrated, irritated, broke, busted, disgusted. I just can't deal with it. Can't take it anymore. It could be the very day that the breakthrough will happen. The very day that something will dramatically shift and change the trajectory of your life. And then those that are connected to you. And so, yes, It gets tiring. Yes, it gets frustrating. The Bible tells us to not grow weary in well-doing. This is why it is so important that along the way that we um, have to find those places and those times of rest. We have to retreat. We love to go to retreats, but do we ever really retreat? Do you ever just take a weekend and say, you know what? I'm not going anywhere. I'm not doing anything. I'm staying in my house. I'm going to just... set aside this time to spend time in worship and meditation. I'm going to maybe do a devotional over the weekend, spend some time in prayer. Do we ever really devote that? We'll do it when we're in times of trouble. But why does it always have to be in times of trouble that we now want to give God all of this concentrated time? It should be something that we should be consistent with. I'm talking to myself. This is not judgment. We should always seek him in that way. Good, bad, ugly, and different. We should always seek him in this way. Take the time to just say, you know what, today, I, I, this, is, this is what I'm doing today. Nothing. Sitting in his presence. Waiting on him to talk. Waiting on him to show up. And when you make that type of commitment, he does show up. He always shows up. Amen. So here are the transformative truths. These are just the honest, brutal truths that we have to face. And we now have to incorporate, accept, and we have to move and and flow in this way because now we're making a decision to show up differently, to do things differently, to be a different person, to have a different attitude and heart posture, to um, now really do what's necessary so that we can see this sincere, genuine, true change in our life. So the first thing is simple. You have to do, you got to show up. You got to do the work. There's no way around it. You know, you can try to take a shortcut. You can try to skip over some steps. You're going to always end up coming back to that place. The bottom line is that you have to show up. It may be painful. It may be uncomfortable. It's just like going to the dentist and you know you got to have that tooth pulled. It's either that or you continue to be in pain. So you got to do the work that is necessary. You got to offer the forgiveness. You got to let some things go. You got to stop being angry and bitter about your past. You got to stop living in the past. You've got to show up. Nobody else can do it for you. God promised us that he will be with us in the valley of the shadow of death. He didn't say that I was going to be there by myself. And so you got to show up. 
Nobody can do it for you. Nobody can go through that trial. Nobody can go through that hard place. You have to do it. And if God chose you for it, that means that he's going to bring you through it and that there's going to be so much beauty that comes out of it. And he's going to provide everything that you need in the midst of it. You just have to rest in the confidence that he's going to do what he says, that you're going to have, you're going to not let anything or anybody steal your joy. You're not going to let anything or anybody frustrate you or irritate you or discourage you. You're not going to let the enemy talk to you crazy about your circumstance. You're going to stand on the fact that God made you a promise and his promises are yes and amen. And that he will bring this to pass just like everything else that he's done in your life. When you make that declaration, then the enemy has to shut up and find something else to do. Amen. So this is a journey that you have to be mindful that you'll um, have to take. Now you'll have the support, you'll have the prayers and the encouragement. You'll have people that even walk with you, but there's certain things that you have to do by yourself. You know, I have a mentor that I can talk to about things, but I still got to walk it out. She can't walk this portion out for me. She can offer me encouragement. She can cover me in prayer. She can give me words of wisdom. But at the end of the day, I still have to show up and I still have to do the work. It's not going to just fall into my hands. I cannot live off of somebody else's grace. This is where I develop relationship with him for myself. This is where intimacy is developed. Amen. You have to do some things you have never done before. And that is just the truth of the matter. You know, when we talked about last week about there being more required, that just means that, you know, we're going to have to do some things that we've never done before. We're going to have to, you know, have some experiences that we've never had before. But we have to just trust and know that it's all going to work out just fine. But we just have to know that these things are going to happen. And there's no sense in us continuing to try to bargain and reason with God. He said what he said. And so what has to happen has to happen. And that's just the way that it is. Amen. The second thing that we have to realize is that we have to be willing to do the hard stuff. We have to be willing to, you know, sometimes look back and face the fact that we've been unkind that we have been unjust, that we have been insensitive, that we have lacked compassion and empathy for other people, that we have maybe said things that we shouldn't have said, that we maybe have done things that we shouldn't have done. We have to go back and examine those things. We have to repent. We have to confess. And we have to make that decision that now we're turning from that. This is where, again, intimacy relationship with God strengthens and develops but it requires us to do some hard things it requires us to say you know what I'm letting it go I forgive this person for you know whatever has happened or the things that were said Uh, if there's misunderstanding if God leads you to you know have a conversation with somebody to you know just have that closure or reconciliation then do it. But sometimes you have to give yourself a closure. Sometimes you have to, you know, reconcile things just, you know, to yourself because you may not have those conversations. I think a lot of times we get caught up in, you know, I just want to have a conversation so I can have closure. And sometimes God is like, no, we, it's, we got to move. And we have to know that's when God is speaking. Sometimes things are just better left unsaid. I think a lot of times what happens, even in my own experience, is we feel as if we have to explain to people and justify things to people. This is why, you know, this happened or this is why this relationship had to end or this is why this situation turned out the way that it it turned out. And some things you just have to leave alone. We try to spend all of our time Yes, we want to have peace with our brothers and sisters, but I think sometimes we want to justify so people won't be mad at us because we're so worried about what people think as opposed to doing what God says. 
And I think that's where we fall into a lot of problems. I think that's where we end up having a lot of issues and difficulties is we're more focused on what people think of us or what people will say as opposed to, you know, moving on, you know, just just kicking the dust off our feet and just moving on. You know, we're worried about what people will think, how it will look, what people will say. And we have to get to a point that when we're doing this hard stuff, when we're showing up in a different way, that we're not concerned with what other people think. We have to understand that we have to show up different, especially if we want something different. We can't show up the way that we always show up and expect that, you know, something new and miraculous in our life. I want to lose weight, but I got to do some things different. So that means I have to exercise. I have to work out. You know, if I want a better job, then that means I have to acquire the skills. I have to apply. I have to job search. You know, we want things. We want to be a wife. But are we doing the things to prepare to be a wife? And it's not just cleaning a house and cooking. It's our mental health, it's our emotional health, it's our psychological health. It is really being deeply rooted in the word of God, you know, because when two come together, they had to work to be one. And it is always going to be the woman that is probably going to, you know, head that a lot of the times. And so you have to understand that you are going to have to do some hard stuff, okay? The last thing is that you have to forge a new path, be ready and willing to do something different. Again, as I said a moment ago, we have to show up different, especially if we desire to have something different, to be someone different, um, to, to be in different rooms and you know, different circles. We, we have to do some things intentionally and strategically so that that will therefore look different for us. But if we keep doing the same things over and over again, there's not going to, the scenery is not going to change. You may go one street over, but you're going to end up back on the same block. So for or for in order for us to really have something be different in our lives, we have to make a decision that I there's has to be something different about me. I can't concern myself with what other people think. I can't concern myself with what other people are going to say. I may lose some friends. I may lose some relationships, but I have to be OK with that because this place no longer fits me. These people no longer speak to the purpose and the plan on my life. If you ever begin to feel suffocated, if you ever begin to feel like a weight on you, prophetically, I'm saying to you, it's time for you to burst out of that bubble. It is time for you to set yourself someone di- somewhere different. It's time to be around someone different that can help get you to that next place. My mentor did a live um, recently and she just talked about the fact that, you know, sometimes if we sit under certain leaders that are not properly training and equipping us, you know, according to the gifts that we have, then we really need to look at that. We really need to understand that there's maybe something different that's required of us and that we may need to show up in a different way, not to try to impress a person to try to get a position or a title, but we have to understand it's the ministry that we do outside of the four walls, in our homes, Um, in the marketplace, when we're at the gas station, when we're in our friend circles or in other organizations, how do we show up in those places? Are we consistently the same person everywhere we go and everything that we do? Or do they get one version of us at church, one version at work, a different version at home, a different version in your friend group, a different version in the in another organization. So you've got like four or five different personalities going on. But when we make a decision to show up different, God shows up different. So when you walk into a room, 
people automatically know before you really even open your mouth like this is what this person is about there's a standard that he or she has there is a particular mindset and heart posture for service and stewarding things well that he or she will not compromise and that she he or she will always be ready be alert and be willing to show up just like the scripture tells us we are always ready to show up we are always paying attention because we don't know the day we don't know the hour we don't know when it's going to happen or how it's going to happen but we know that it is going to come so as long as we stay in a posture of preparation and being equipped and being properly trained then at the end of the day, we will be ready when God is ready to release us, when God is ready to send us, when God tells us to open our mouth, when God sends us forth to do great things in the earth for his glory. It is because we made a decision to show up differently. It's because we made a decision to change our mindset. It's because we made a decision to change our heart posture. It's because we made a decision to change our attitude. We made this decision to change. And so when we make that decision to change, there's so many amazing things that can happen for us at that point, because now we're an open, willing vessel and God can just pour. He can empty out what's not needed and he can pour in exactly what it is that we need for the assignment that lies ahead. Know that the work that we're doing is not just for the here and now. But it's for what lies ahead, who we will encounter, who we will have conversations with in the future. So we always should be in a place of forward thinking. That is why it is so important to let what was stay where it is. Amen. Amen. God, thank you for just being present with us on this podcast on today. Thank you for speaking your wisdom, sharing your knowledge and your great love with us. Thank you for reminding us of how much you remind of how much you love us and for reminding us that when we show up, you are always, always going to show up. You will always be right on time with exactly what we need, Lord God. And we thank you for that proper provision and protection at all times. Even when we don't see it, even when we don't quite know what it is, we can rest in the confidence that it is you. So we thank you in advance. We give you glory, honor, and praise. It is in Jesus' name we pray. We say amen, amen, and amen, amen. Thank you so much for joining me uh, for this week's episode of Transformative Talk with Coach V. I hope that you will join me again on next week for another brand new episode, brand new topic as we continue to plow, as we continue to dig, as we continue to go deeper and higher in the things of God, as we continue to transform the way that we think, the way that we talk, and the way that we show up in the world. I love you guys. Thank you for listening. Keep showing up and keep doing your work. And remember, I am always, always rooting for you. Until next time.